Hi, and welcome to our information technology series on troubleshooting. Together we are going to identify and solve problems for anyone who uses a computer every day. We will look at common problems like hardware inside the computer, hardware as in peripherals, software, network and internet problems. Diagnosing what is wrong with a computer is usually a step-by-step -step process of elimination. The best way to go about it is to collect information by asking yourself questions. Then you try to identify the possible problems and suggest solutions. Always keep in mind that there are many possible solutions. So select a problem, try a solution, and if it doesn't work, move on to the next possibility until your problem is resolved. Today we'll start with hardware issues inside your computer. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to deal with the power supply, motherboard faults, and hard disk drive faults. It's impossible to deal with every possible problem, but the more problems you resolve successfully, the more experience you will gain and so be better prepared to solve the next problem. Ah, this is here. Hey, Joe. Hey, you're busy. Oh, I'm just busy with this motherboard. How are you? Ish. Not good. Not good at all. PC problems. My computer is as dead as a cell phone without a battery. Uh, yes, I did make sure that the monitor was on. And I checked the mains, made sure that there wasn't any problem with the wall socket. And, I mean, I even plugged in a lamp to make sure that we weren't having power failure. But... The lamp works just fine, and my PC, nothing. Did you check the surge protection? Mm hmm It was switched on and worked just fine. Well, let's take a look. So the power button won't start the computer. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a power supply problem to me. I thought it might be uh, the connectors that weren't connected properly, but I disconnected the plugs, I opened up the computer and checked. All was fine. The computer won't boot up at all? Mm-mm. Right, let's see. Let's plug her in. See? Even the fan's not working. Well, a dead fan usually means a dead power supply. Ish. You're telling me I need a new power supply? Looks like this. <sighs> Now, if the power supply seems to be faulty, you can mm. either buy and fit a new power supply or take the computer in for repairs. Now, let's check it out. Let's always remember, though, before opening up, let's take out the power supply. Mm. Let me take her off. In the meantime, you can start again. Mm. Mm. Connect everything here, just sits as you put it right here. Okay. I'll just connect it. So, okay, so she is. Okay, now the power supply is the heart of the computer. Mm. There you go, easy does it, right? Now the most common type of power supply is the ATX power supply. Yeah. It uses standardized connectors compatible with the vast majority of the motherboards of any size. PSUs come in two varieties, modular and non-modular. Can I help you? Yes, you can. Okay, Joe, mm -hmm. while you and I hook up this new power supply, let's recap what we've done so far. First, check if the monitor is on. If not, switch it on. If it's on, check the mains. Switch the power on or wait for the power outage to end. If that's not the problem, check the power switch of the computer. Make sure it's on. If it is, check the surge protector. Make sure it's on. If it is on, but the fan is dead, it usually means you have to replace your power supply. Easy enough to fix. Uh, can I use your internet while you're busy? Help yourself. No, I just need to check some emails and blogs and stuff. Thank you. Oh man, what is it with me and computers today? Okay, turn it off, disconnect the keyboard and reboot. If the beeping stops, it's probably the keyboard. 
keyboard, are you serious? Yes, it's that key or keyboard that has failed can cause the computer to beep abnormally. Mm -hmm. If the beeping stops when the keyboard is disconnected, the key is probably stuck or the keyboard is bad. Slap the back of the keyboard gently to dislodge any dust or dirt or hair and this will ensure that there are no stuck keys. And, okay. Right, switch it back on. Just Yep, looks like it's, um, <sighs> so it's not the keyboard. Okay. Well, there's no beeping or buzzing when the computer's off, so it can't be the system chassis alarm. Okay, verify the beeping or buzzing noise does not also occur when the computer is off. It's probably the system chassis alarm. Hmm. If this is the case, remove the cover of the case and then put the case back on. Um, does this computer have a BIOS keyboard password? Okay. Good thinking, Joe. Now, the BIOS keyboard password can sometimes cause a computer to beep and the keyboard not to work. No, it's not that either. How can you be sure? The keyboard LEDs, the num lock, cap lock, and scroll lock LEDs would flash continuously if the computer had a password. Well, if you ever need a holiday job, I have one for you. But I'm, I'm running out of possibilities though, hey? Right, now the most likely cause of uh, abnormal beeping is when the computer does not pass the post. The power on self-test? Yes. At least it didn't give you an error message. Now the computer I'm working on gave this message when it was booted. Mm. Error BIOS ROM checksum system halted. Mm. This indicates that your computer BIOS ROM chip or motherboard is physically bad. Um, BIOS as in basic input output system. Correct. Do you know what the function is? It does the power on self-test um, during the system startup, right? The BIOS is the boot firmware designed to be the first code run by a PC when powered on. It also saves system parameters and loads the operating system. Now the motherboard is the most obvious component inside a computer. All the different parts communicate through the motherboard, so you should be able to find it fairly easily, right? There are many different types though, like some of these over here. Everything is connected to the motherboard, whether it's by slotting into it directly or via cables. Motherboards are generally split into two different groups, those for AMD processors and those for Intel processors. However, they're almost entirely the same. The only difference is the CPU socket. This determines which processors are compatible. Let me go and show you on the motherboard that I'm working on. Okay. Well, I haven't found it yet, so again, I use the process of elimination, so I'm checking the chipsets first. Chipsets control and connect all the components that are connected to the motherboard, right? Yes, it usually comprises of a Northbridge chip that allows the CPU, the RAM, and the graphics cards to communicate between each other, as well as connecting with the South. The Southbridge chip. And this chip is responsible for the communication between the other components. I'm impressed. Can you tell me what the difference is between the CPU socket and the RAM socket? The CPU socket is where the processor is installed and the RAM socket is where the computer's memory is installed. Correct. All modern CPU sockets use some form of lever to lock the processor down against the motherboard to ensure that there is a good connection between the pins and contacts of the motherboard and the processor. There are quite a few common socket designs, but they all look relatively similar, as you can see here. As for RAM, most modern motherboards have two channels and either two or four slots, one or two for each channel. An exception is Intel Socket 1366 chipset, which has three channels and six slots. As you can see here, it mentions DIMM A1, DIMM A2, DIMM B1, and DIMM B2. Now this shows the order in which the RAM should be inserted. The letter shows which channel the slot belongs to, while the number shows which slot is recognized first within the channel. There's one more main slot you forgot to mention. Remember the 20 plus four pin and the four plus four pin connectors on the power supply? The power socket. Yes, the four plus four pin socket is always right near the CPU socket. The 20 plus 4 pin socket, more often than not, is right on the edge furthest from the back of the case, near the RAM slots, right? If the main slots are fine, there could be a problem with the expansion slots. The PCI is the most common slot for expansion cards. There's a new standardized connector which has slowly started replacing it. The PCI Express. My mom's computer is also acting up. It keeps prompting her for time and date when she boots it up. Probably a bad or missing CMOS RTC battery. I never thought of that. 
Um, could I replace the battery myself? I know where to find it on the motherboard. Yes, if it can be removed, use your fingers to grab on the edge of the battery and pull it up and out of the container holding it. Use one hand to move the clip up and the other hand to pull the battery out. Then you replace the battery, turn on the computer and reset the CMOS values to the defaults. Make sure to save the settings before exiting after the values have been entered. Many CMOS setups let you press a key like F10 for instance to save values and exit in one action. Great. Mm -hmm. I'll be you in a minute. Good day, Ali speaking. How can I help you? It's one of my clients just bought a new hard drive. Mrs. Lamini, a six gig hard disk drive one setup will generally only show 5.9 gig. It's perfectly normal, not to worry about. Pleasure, bye. I always get asked that. Not being able to see the full amount of hard drive is a common problem. It's important to know that one setup, the hard drive will not reach its full capacity. A six gig hard disk drive may only show as 5.9 gig. If however, a large portion is not seen, it's likely there's a problem with the hard drive. Let's go back to the IT corner and take a look at your PC. A number of things can go wrong with your hard drive. Mm -hmm. Hard disk drive errors when a large portion of the hard drive isn't seen. It could be a limitation with the hardware or software. That's correct, Joe. Now, verify that the hard disk drive is properly set up in CMOS. If the computer has the option of auto or auto detect, it should set up the hard drive properly. If it doesn't... You'll have to set up a CMOS manually, right? Now, if you did all that and a large portion of the hard drive is still not being detected... Mm. I suppose it could be a software or setup issue, right? Make sure you're not encountering a software-related issue by deleting and recreating the partitions using FDisk. Unfortunately, this will erase all information on the hard disk drive, but will allow you to make sure you're not encountering other issues. My mom tried to install a new hard drive on her old computer, mm -hmm. but it just wouldn't. Okay, if you have an old computer, it's likely that your BIOS may not be supporting the hard disk drive that you're attempting to install. So you'll have to install a BIOS update that supports a larger hard disk drive. Yes. Okay, let's recap. When the hard drive is not being detected or seen, it may be due to its limitations. The CMOS not being set up properly, a software setup issue, a BIOS issue limitation, a hardware issue. Now, many other hard drive problems can arise. Take a look at this flowchart. It shows some of the questions you can ask when you encounter hard drive problems, for instance, if the hard drive isn't detected as master on post, what would you check first? You'd set the jumper and BIOS to make an HDD master and then check if the HDD is detected as the master. That's right. If not, does it detect other drives? Mm. And if it does? You swap the cables and slots and check again. And if it doesn't detect the other drives, you check if it works on another PC and if it doesn't work on another PC, that means it's dead. And if it does work on another PC, that means the motherboard is dead. Very good, Joe. What if you get the error message, boot sector not found? You recover the MBR from Windows XP, right? And if you're missing a NTLDR? You recover the NTLDR from Windows XP. And if it's not missing? You check if the Windows XP boot CD sees the drive partitions. Mm -hmm. If it does, check if the Windows safe mode is working. If not, that's your problem. The Windows XP needs to be repaired. That's what? What if you get messages like hard disk controller failure? Your hard drive disk probably needs to be connected properly. Yes. Now, you have to check that all the cables are connected properly. The power cable? Yes, and the interface cable. Make sure it's properly connected to the interface card or motherboard, and that it's connected in the right direction. Pin one, the red or blue edge of the cable will usually point towards the power connection, right? If you have IDE or EIDE, mm -hmm. hard disk drive, the software you use can also cause problems. If you run scan disk or other disk utilities and encounter errors, with your hard disk drive, remember to back up your data. Format the hard disk drive and start over. Okay. 
If you continue to experience the same issues, it is possible that the hard disk drive may be bad and needs to be replaced. Ish. So much can go wrong, eh? Exactly. Now, the only way to figure out what your problem is, is by means of elimination. Here's your task for this week. Your computer at home is giving the following error message. Invalid media, type reading, drive C. One, what could be the cause? Two, how would you solve this problem?